Welcome back to another sunny, beautiful episode of Good Children. If you want more of this special little podcast, don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon. We release one episode per week on Patreon every single Friday. We are talking the things we're not talking on the podcast. It's fun. It's flirty. It's sexy. It's seven bucks. And for this entire uncut episode, come to Patreon this week. And for more Good Children, you can find us across all social media platforms at Good Children Pod. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're new here, welcome. Welcome to the pod. Welcome to the family. I Buckle hope you up. enjoy your stay. So tell me about... So tell me... Wait. <laughs> so, uh... Welcome back to my my podcast where we interview, you know, people, people. From, from all walks of life and just see, you know, how they live. Because it's important as a conservative man in the U.S. to really get to know, you know, how gay people are. Um, today's guest is Ben Platt. Yeah, so being gay has been really great so far. I don't expect you to understand in those overalls, but I do think that, like... Um, I also wear overall, so I think that we have a lot of similarities. Right. Um, yeah, for sure, bro. Yeah. I can also talk like that if you needed. What's up, bro? Why do you have to do everything? <laughs> I have to do it all. Like, I have to do it all. It's crazy. Like, let me be straight. Let me be the straight one today. <laughs> it's like I'm in, literally wearing a Ketchikan Alaska hat. I Joe, where the hell did you get that from? From Ketchikan Alaska. You know what? I can't take you. It's one day you're you have a Ketchikan, next day you have a little Jacques Mousse, and what are you gonna That's say? That's just who I am. It's duality of fag, you know? Yeah, it is. The listeners aren't gonna hear birds today. They no won't birds, hear birds because we're back at Spotify Studio. Which like this is home. This is it, this is home. I'm hosting Thanksgiving here this year, I think. This is our Thanksgiving table. <laughs> this is a new Americana. It is. Um, it's kind of gorgeous here. It really does feel like home and Spotify is just like gifting us this time, which is and the the labor that it takes to do this. It's really genuinely insane. Beautiful. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I feel like I've had a beautiful weekend on the beach, relaxing, just getting a little tan. Are you looking at me and you're saying he just got back from vacation? Mm-hmm. And I'm excited about today. I'm very excited about today. Let's get into it. Good children. That was wait. Very Tuffy. somber. That was your base. Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on our 22 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s. And all of the nostalgia, trauma, and special guests that go along with it. Today's special guest is Teffy. Hey. How are you? Hey. <laughs> You probably absolutely know Teffy from her TikTok, from her socials, sharing her incredible, poignant, funny, hilarious thoughts on pop culture. And I feel like just in general, like life advice. I was going to say her advice is like top notch. I think that the thing that I really appreciate the most about Teffy is she has gained all of this notoriety for just being herself. And today we're getting into what made her who she is. <gasps> Let's get back to middle school, back to the basics, pop culture, mm. drama, slang, boots, house, house down. down. There was a story in my family, 1998. So Sunset Elementary, go Phoenix. Go Phoenix. We, ha we did a Christmas show every mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm because we're all Latinos and we're all Catholic. Mm -hmm. How else are we gonna be feel, feel bad about ourselves? You know what I right. mean? So that year, Miss Noy Cabarocas decided that we were gonna do All I Want For Christmas Is You. And somebody got the solo. And I love that for them. But apparently during the show, when she was walking down the bleachers, I decided it was gonna be a duet. I don't even remember her name, but I know her family still talks about me. Oh, I'm sure, it, yeah, you're a legend in their what, home. I just. And I remember at one point going, like, to, to get her to duet with me during the <laughs> thing, like, you're flat. I can't sing. Was it for the high note? Were you Not going... for the high note. I think in general I was just publicly shaming her. Or <laughs> I saw people doing that in, like, music videos. So right. I thought that's, like, what like, you do. You know it. Let's do this. But I remember... Is that on camera? Is there footage of that? I don't think so. You have to VHS dig into the archives. Did, yeah. yeah. You have to start digitizing. Yeah. Because that's a good we one. Yeah. I, but I remember what I was wearing. Like, I remember, like, holding my dress up to go down 
the bleachers, just like deciding. Good for you. How old were you here? I was eight. Eight, eight, eight. years old. Mm-hmm. So you were like, I'm going to be a pop star. I've always wanted to be a pop star. Yeah. yeah. I've always, I feel like, what's her name? I, I want to be bad. Mm, you make that you look make so, so good. good. Got things on my Who mind. Who is that? Willa Ford. Let's Willa go. Ford. Let's go. We're like your brain is seconds working. We have a Willa Ford name exactly. drop. <laughs> I saw Willa Ford Never and I'm like, it. I can do what she can do. Yeah. yeah. Well, easily. You sounded pretty good right there. I know you were saying comedy album, but I think it's just like you got to believe in yourself. Yeah. 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 You're gonna well, do it. I think. I think honestly, like I could just sing the titles, like not ask too much of myself, no. not mm-hmm. strain myself. Yes. My problem is that this is not my voice. However, <laughs> where are you going? I think so. Growing up in Miami, people ask me all the time, like, where are you guys from? Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. Yes, you are. Yeah, mm-hmm. we are. You hear <laughs> yeah. in our accents. So yeah. when I when people are like, I'm gonna go to Miami, where should I go? I'm like, I have no idea because that city has changed so much. Have you gone recently? No. No. I haven't been to Miami. I have an apartment there. We should go. Wait, I'm on the way. There yeah. you go. The We're buying packed. flights after this. Hold on. My coffee oh. is here. I could kiss you on the mouth. Thank you. Yeah, we're yeah. good. No kiss? Well, no. It was a little mad men of me. Like, yes. no kiss? So growing up in Miami, like, there's there were no bars. So, like, if you wanted to go celebrate your friend, like, you, you, weren't, you wouldn't go to a bar. You'd go to the Cheesecake Factory and then live. So I think years. I hear old videos of myself, and I'm like, what a petite little flower petal of a girl. And now I hear myself, and I'm like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you going to attribute your voice to the Cheesecake Factory? No. T- Wait, I'm, I think we could. I, we honestly, could. the dairy has probably ruined <laughs> my body in so many ways yeah. that we don't even know until like right. I'm 98. But I do think that the excessive partying I've been doing since I was 15 have changed mm. the way I talk and communicate with people for Wait, the rest of my life. So you're saying that you were going out to the cheese? That was the thing to do. You're going you go to out the, to the Cheesecake Factory? Like you're factory? drinking at the Cheesecake Factory? No, no, not drinking. You say hi, happy birthday. You oh. have the meal. Oh. You split it 76 ways yes, with of course. Yeah. 76 other girls who have their first Bank of America debit card. Yes. Oh no, I lost mine. I literally lost my card yesterday. So <gasps> this is like on brand. Wait, wow, you're really reliving these moments. We we're going to Cheesecake Factory after this. Yeah, Stop. Stop. I'm trying to go. Honestly, I fucking, I think those I grew up thinking those were no- normal serving sizes. Yeah, no, yeah. same. I mean, and a I normal mean, menu the place. The menu does give me anxiety, but it's like, biblical. It, it is. It, it 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 honestly takes me back to a place where I'm like, yeah, why not have a shrimp scampi at the mall? Exactly. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not have a shrimp dead and finish with cheesecake? It makes I was sense. gonna have a shrimp scampi. <laughs> it would be at the mall, and where followed else? by. A yeah. Reese's Pieces cheesecake, yes. yes. And then an Auntie Anne's pretzel on the walk back. And that's when my parents came to this country. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the American dream. That's the American yeah. dream. Yeah, so I just feel like everything that I do and everything that I haven't done and everything I want to do but I'm too scared to do, I blame on the Cheesecake Factory. That's, so. I honestly think that you're at the perfect podcast. Mm-hmm. How fucking dare you? How <laughs> <laughs> fucking dare you? <laughs> what you've done to me. Dare I say the checkers? The checkers, checkers fries. Were you a checker milkshake fan? Slutty fry. Oh, with the fry. I see. I see. I see people doing that with Wendy's. I'm like, have a little fucking decorum. <laughs> Go to checkers. Please. There was like a. It was like a, almost a peppered fry. And there's always, always, always some like hot guy like selling his like mixtapes when I was growing up, and I'm like. Wait. Yeah, I'll get one. Like, I'll take a cheeseburger and that mixtape. And a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> and a kiss. <laughs> okay, so you were partying at 15. Hard. That's that's our big difference here. That's yeah. that's one but of our major I, differences. I, I, I wanted to be grown so bad, and I don't understand why. Like, right. I wanted to be grown. Like, I lost my virginity at 15. I look at pictures oh, wow. of me, and I'm, like, so cute. It's, like, my 17th birthday, and I'm, like, with all my friends were hugging. I was, like, I was that's crazy. Is that crazy? That's crazy. It really what is. were we doing at seventeen? Like at seventeen, the Oppenheim twins. Literally, <laughs> actually, yeah. You love a kiss. Yep. I love. I would love a kiss. Oh, whatever. I look <laughs> at myself on Instagram. I'm like, I. Why doesn't anybody want to do kissing with me? Like, it's so crazy to me. I but feel like I'm, people must want. I'm going to tell you, a lot of people want to yeah. kiss you. A I don't think so. My DMs are very, very dry. My assistant Emily is actually always talking about it. Are you somebody who like? Would she you wants like to hook a DM. Like, wh- or is that how you wanted to like start? Some I would love a smoke signal. I'd love a beeper. <laughs> okay. I'd love a beep on a beeper. All right. Well, you heard it here. Any of our listeners slide into Teffy's DMs. It's, it's well, like gays and girls. It's gays so. and girls. So. Yeah, it's all it is. Yeah. <laughs> like I see like a hot guy DM me. I go, what? And then it's replied to the story. Yeah. And I go, <laughs> like, I don't even, it's so many A's that I can't even see the SI right now. <laughs> I'm like, thank you, Derek. Yeah. Thanks, Derek. Thanks so much. Oh my but God. my assistant Emily wants to hook me up with like, um, 
a Orthodox Jewish matchmaker. <gasps> I am tits and ass on an Instagram. If my last resort is an Orthodox Jewish matchmaker, I'm gonna fucking do it. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking do it. But can you? What would we talk about? I mean, what would we talk about? Yeah, I was gonna say I don't yeah. think you'd run out of conversation yeah. topic. Cheesecake Factory. That's always that brings that's everyone together. That's the connector. Together. Yeah, yeah. Worldwide. Yeah. Worldwide. Worldwide. Are you saying I love you after like yeah. a week? I'm definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, you can say anything on this. But podcast. I'm only I'm only like a boyfriend girl. You know what I mean? Like I like I love a relationship girl. Mm -hmm. You know, like I love that. One of my ex best friends like fell in love with me, and she's like, "I love you." And I'm like, "So we should be together." Like I love, right? Yeah. Love or whatever. So how do you feel about Ariana Grande and like what she's been up to? I'm off off record. Cut it. <laughs> Cut it. <laughs> I feel I feel like she is. So I have a friend whose little sister went to went to high school with her. Okay, okay. And they're still friends. So when you hear that somebody is friends with somebody for that long, she's a Florida girl. I'm a Florida girl. Yes. You know what I mean? I feel like she's good with her original Florida girl group. And I like that she left behind the aesthetic of Mac Cosmetics Counter Girl in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We yeah. let that go. For a while, I was with it. I was like, oh, kitten ears. She, she what can forward. you do? What can, I'm wearing a ribbon. Right. You know? Very, very That's coquette. You've got your nose on it. Yeah, like you're, you thank get you. it. You yeah, know I'm my explore attention. page. And my explore page is all like girls putting blush on their nose. I'm yes. like, cute. <laughs> but I don't know where it, where I start to look like I'm not 33 and I'm trying to look younger. You know, like Fred. I think that you're doing I'm just a fine. baby. Yeah. <laughs> are you sucking your thumb? With, with... I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're just like. <laughs> anyway, but it, why don't you make that your Instagram bio for like three days what, after this podcast? Sucking mm -hmm. my thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I would. Perfect. I'm going to leave here. My Instagram bio is sucking, sucking my, my thumb. thumb. With, like, a lot the, of men. with the Instagram pin. With like the pin <laughs> sucking my thumb. Just. And then it's like management. Yeah, <laughs> management <laughs> at. Yeah. With, with Ariana Grande, though, I feel like she has been. Okay, so I made a video where I was like, this is so difficult. But we didn't know any. And I made a joke out of it because what's going on? Sorry, I was Hello? Watch, I was watching this move. Honestly, having a podcast is not fucking easy. I thought mm. it'd be so easy and people think it's so easy uh, like for me because ADHD is so rampant and violent. Right. You know what I mean? Mm. Absolutely not. That's why this is working. Yeah. Yeah. ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's the common denominator. Do you think it's the microplastics in our bloodstream? Yeah, and I drink them every day on purpose. Mm -hmm. I think they're point. delicious. Yeah. Delicious. I'm doing the flavored water. I've been I've been talking about it for months. You know, like stop. flavored water TikTok, water talk. No, Tanya. but I do follow Martin the Water Sommelier. Like, this doesn't ring a bell. Do you want to? You want to tell Teffy about Tanya? Tanya, I told everyone about Tanya. Oh. Yeah. No, Tanya is an influencer. Her username was Taking Back My Life at 42. She had bariatric surgery. She <laughs> um, like lost like 200 pounds. She makes. She's taking back her life at 42. Now she's 44, and so she's been doing this now for two years. Mm -hmm. She got she's a million followers. She just hosted a cruise that went horribly wrong. It wasn't her fault, but her whole thing is like. I'm gonna pour us some Seven Up powder and some like mermaid juice. Oh, I water. love this thing. Yeah, yes. yes. Once you say Seven Up powder, I've yeah. only seen that in one place. Yes. I know her by her first name. It's Tanya. It's, it's Tanya. Tanya. Mm -hmm. And so I've been drinking strawberry water ever since, and I do think it's made of microplastics. Strawberry it's water. Starburst all pink flavor packet. Seven times a day. You Wait, know that I was the face of the pink Starburst last year. We Google it. You were Miss Pink Starburst. I was the face of me and Paris Hilton. Wait, that makes a lot but of sense. But she does not want to be affiliated, so I... <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did. They were like, in all the interviews, just don't mention Paris Hilton. I'm like, that's why I did this, so I don't really understand. But on this one, you can talk about Paris. The day Paris Hilton followed me, and she commented, deal. sliving. I'm sure were that was you like no longer, Were you like dead? Do you know when Sailor Moon floats and she starts spinning? That or like, you. have you seen Cabin, uh, Cabin in the Woods? The yeah. evil has been defeated. Yes. Like that was me. Like you haven't seen it? No. Okay. Can just I just assume that I haven't seen he's, it? He misses a lot culturally, pop yeah. culturally. That's why you have us, though. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You have to That's rely why I follow on. You, we so can't like, do okay. everything for you. We can't. That's, you need to I've live. I've been saying that. You can't live through my eyes. <laughs> my you <been> guys. <laughs> verbatim, verbatim. Cabin in the Woods. I was 15 years old. I saw it in theaters with a boyfriend. I said, "Life changing." Put your mouth off my tit for one second. I think this is actually. And movie. what age? What? You said 15. So anyway. <laughs> I was like a little, I, I was with him for like nine years though. Oh, okay. So, which is unnatural. 
And he okay. was not just with me for <laughs> I'm nine so sorry. years. So. You said 15, you were with him for nine years. Oh, from 14 to 23. Oh, I thought wow. it meant nine years before the 15. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm trying to do math in my no, head. Like, no, 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 no. No, I, I would have loved a boyfriend at that age, too, though. I would have <laughs> loved. I think I came out of the room like, boyfriend. Oh, my God. I remember where I was when I realized if I had a cell phone, I didn't. I could talk to boys outside of school. I. And my mom was so happy to get me a cell phone. She's like, if you beat me one, four, three, one more, one more time, I'm going to fucking kill myself. Right. I'm like, you're the only number I know. <laughs> but also on TikTok, I said I had a beeper and some fucking rascal asked, oh, are you a doctor? Go fuck yourself. I'm just old. Are and you a fit- doctor? Because those are the only people, <laughs> which I could be. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. Well be. With my little, I wear my doctor. coquette bow to the yeah. ER. Wear your scrubs. It's cute. But I don't think people realize that before everybody had, you know, yeah. a beeper, and nobody understood how really it worked. All these codes. That's why I stuck to one four three. Right. To, with my mom or yeah. whatever. But anyway, how did it, I'm sorry to ask me. this to you, but how did a beeper work? I don't know. I don't, you okay. can ask me how. I think but it Wi-Fi, was like it was just a. It was like a, a, a an alert would come into the beeper, yeah. and there was nothing else. It, it was, was like beep. the contact. <laughs> oh my, that was like it's like that. We like was, just narrowly missed that. So yeah. I so cell phones started be, like kids started to get cell phones in like 2002, 2001. Okay. Like yeah. Snake yeah. Nokia. Yeah. And my mom and my dad are like very, they were very strict people with me. So I think they wanted to like vet it out. But then I think cell phones started their marketing as like, you'll know where your kid is at all times. Yeah. So my mom went to Metro PCS yes. and got me an egg phone and I couldn't play Snake. Humiliating. Also, the year before that, she went to Payless, didn't tell me, told me they were real Adidas. First day of school, why does her? Why do her Adidas have four stripes? Do you even know what it's like for me to show my face around Santa Elementary? Go Phoenix. With four my stripes. Heart. No, plummeted through my asshole. I said, oh, yeah. what's that? I just shit out my heart. Nine years old, 2009. I mean, <laughs> I wish. Nine years old, 2009. <laughs> no, yeah. It's all adding up. Yeah, everyone do the bath. 1999, I was already five foot seven. Oh, no. Wow. It was, people People try to troll me no, online. No, you were five like, seven at nine years old? Yes, and I got my period. I'm sorry. At I was nine? A, I was a bleeding giant of a woman. towering over? No tits, no ass. But five seven. That's crazy. Yeah, we would show up for like the school picture, and I'd be like, I know where to go. Like, <laughs> But you were getting model at nine years old. Well, I don't think so. <laughs> I was more like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, why doesn't any, why doesn't anyone want to dance with me? You know? And and heels are mandatory for school dances, which is so cool. I remember Wait, being like, come on, mandatory? Yeah, for our. Now, I wanted to ask you about school dances. I had a feeling you would have some school dance stories. I mean, that's where we all like. I would cry, baby, in the middle of the floor. Like our right. teachers would booty dance with us. Mm. Not Coach Daniels. We love you, Coach G. Coach D. I follow her on Instagram. She, I keep liking your photos. She won't follow me back. I'm like, she, you have 200 followers. Like, <laughs> she knows you're can there. You, yeah, she's yeah. Like, aware. You don't not see me. She's like, why is she obsessed with? Yeah, me? love you, Coach D. You look amazing. She's listening. Yeah. She's a listener. She actually called in. She goes, God fucking. Question. She's like, no, I can't go to the fucking cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but Ariana Grande. Right. I made a video, and I just want to say that the media is very tricky because you do mm-hmm. videos before you learn more information. Yes. So I made a video where I was like, I don't care that she cheated with Big Sean, Anaya Rivera, and right. and Kazi David and Pete Davidson. Yeah. And, and Mac Miller and his girlfriend. Yes. And you know, and now, who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And my boyfriend and Ariana Grande and like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but. It, but you know, like she, they're going through a divorce, whatever. Now we find out that the wife is verbatim devastate, devastated, devastated, and that kills me. Mm-hmm. But also, how you look at that man and you're like, wow, anyone could devastate you. <laughs> <laughs> You left you your high your high school sweetheart ten years ten for Ariana Grande, and I kind of I look at pictures of her and I'm like. Yeah. Like, you're great. Like, you're yeah. going to be fine. This guy. That's a blow. That's a blow. Yeah. Especially Ariana Grande. But she also has, like, I mean, like, she has so much power in that way. It's like. It's... I think that woman could write an amazing biopic about her life. You're always. Potentially a TV series. I think you're. Uh, he's always thinking he's biopic. Biopic. Always thinking always. This, it's like the Long Island this. serial killer. Joe's like, a biopic daughter movie. needs to write a book. I have, if I have... that daughter does not write a book and sell it for $500 million, she's. You will. 
I mean, she's. I, I, he'll have to step in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'll go try it with pleasure. Have I met them? No. no. Am I from Long Island? So yeah. it all in started the in nineteen. Same town. Same town. Same. Long Island has more than one town. I grew up like watching. What else did I watch? Like your big reality. Well. Not even. It was just like the biggest fucking thing. Yeah, like right. the Osbournes. Like I don't the even think Osbournes we. Osbournes were big mm-hmm. to me. I, I love... used to call them my family. Well... I would be like, "That's Uncle Uncle Ozzy and Aunt Sharon." That's scary. <laughs> I used to like for years. I think my whole family. I texted my parents. No, it's like, how's Uncle, Uncle Ozzy doing? They would they would immediately be like, oh, "I am wouldn't better than a hundred percent sure you get a Sharon Osbourne on this show, and I will help you." I'm <laughs> one million percent sure. What else are you doing? Guest. Sorry, Sharon, but like <laughs> we go from you to Sharon Osbourne. Oh, she could sift through all those brand deals. <laughs> like she's she would definitely she's no, okay. all one thousand. I'm and gonna I, say we'll put her on like the season four or five docket. I feel like she could come later on. I, I dare you to have her on here without me. I actually dare you. <laughs> without so Wait, you, you want to come back? You want to come back? One thousand percent. I will. Pret- I'll say we've been doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we've been friends so since long. four years old, mm-hmm. and we all mm-hmm. grew up on Long Island. Right? Yeah. They beat me that you were coming, and I. <laughs> <laughs> She left the emergency room and got right here. Jessica Simpson and Nick Lachey. And they got married because of 9-11. They got married because, because of 9-11. 9/11. Yes. I'm, this is one of my favorite stories because it's just so, like, um, like I can see America, like, l- eating this mm-hmm. up. So apparently they had broken up. They went on tour together. And they broke up because... Jessica was so young and she didn't want to like be so serious. And this guy's from like from Cincinnati, Ohio. Like he's like a good like Christian boy. Like all he wants to do is like have a wife and whatever, whatever. And she's like, no, I have to live my life. And then 9-11 happened and Jessica called him and she was like, that could have been you. And like, I can't live without you. You know what I mean? Like tomorrow's not promised and like I love you. you. Like it could have been been any of us. Like you know what I mean? Like you know what I mean? Like that, that could have been like the yeah, last time. It. Like, I don't know where you were. That was so scary, whatever. Um, I want to be with you. And that's why they got married. Wow. Can you imagine America foaming at the oh, fucking mouth? Yeah. yeah. I was foaming at the mouth. I love talking love about what 9 11 has done to pop culture. Me were you an American Idol fan? Kelly Clarkson. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk. I. You can cry. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> uh, Kelly Clarkson, I so I don't know about you, but like when I was a kid, th- some things would happen. Like, for example, like my mom would be be like, oh, I'm ha- I'm pregnant. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? And I looked down, she's eight months pregnant. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you don't yeah. realize like the, the, how things like develop. And so for American Idol, I remember just like fi- it being like top 10 and then announcing Kelly Clarkson. I'm like, who the fuck is that? That's the last time I ever said that. Yeah. Wow. She has changed. Wow. My life. Do you remember mm. from Justin to Kelly? Yeah. I'll never forget. I watched it alone in a Carnival Cruise. Nobody showed up for the premiere on the Carnival Cruise. And it was just you. Hold on. The, the premiere. The premiere of it on a cruise ship. Oh. I was with my dad. My dad was like, "What is this?" And I'm like, "You don't understand how important it was." It was a. Ama- it was the worst movie I've ever seen. Yes. I would watch it again today. I've rewatched it, and it reminds me a lot of the high, high School Musical too. It's kind of the same exact movie. Really. Visually, it almost looks like it was both the dancing, was, yes, the pool like scene, the pool scene. Yes, mm-hmm. looks a lot Fabulous. alike. He is he produced something recently, Justin, that is like super super popular. Justin I, Once upon a midnight dreary. No, what's oh. the Broadway show? Once upon a one more time. Once upon a one more time. That's what he did with Britney. Yes. Yes. And we have to go. We have to yeah, go. We do. I have a Broadway plug. She um, invited me to go see um, Mrs. Doubtfire on Ooh. Broadway. Oh. At the end, when they do a moment of silence for Robin Williams, it was not silent. You were sobbing. Yeah. Yes. Of course. I remember where I was when he passed away. I do too. Okay. Mm-hmm. You first. Where, okay. I was actually at one of the Great Lakes. I was in like <laughs> the middle, like middle America uh-huh. on vacation with my mm-hmm. entire family. You and did I, do that trip. I did do that. We were in a hotel lobby no. and it was like the whole lobby got the news at the same second. And every, you were watching people like break off into pockets and, and like con- Robin Williams is dead. Consoling their family. Well, it wasn't like. Terror attack level, yeah. but people were definitely upset. <laughs> no one like, was like, it's gonna be okay, baby. Other, but it was, you were watching people realize it in real time. It was dark. Where were real. you? Me? I honestly don't even remember. You Is blacked that... it out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Trauma Thank response. You blocked Trauma. It out. I was get. I was in a f- small argument with someone okay. because 
when you're in a revolving fucking door in a fucking and, and they're like don't push too fast and i remember her being like hey slow down and she's across the glass so i look like a fuck i'm like what are you talking about we're leaving an equinox on 74th and second mm, love that. and because i was a, a personal trainer for two years I, I i've done every it. hustle you were a personal, a personal trainer? trainer right now what isn't that crazy <laughs> so you're like the the personal trainer and like I'm the like, beginning of bridesmaid like, what's up team <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly that. I was such a toxic, toxic personal trainer because I would only knew the sayings that my ballet teacher would say to me. And ballet is not like yeah. body posy. You know what my ballet teacher told me once? I was like nine. She was like, why would you reward yourself with food? You're not a dog. Yeah. Again, I, I'm familiar with that. It's like I can <laughs> familiar. Like, were you a ballet dancer? No. no but you were like ballet a adjacent. Child, yeah. <laughs> that, now that's going to stay with me. No, oh, but it's no. not true because that's exactly what you should do. Yes, you deserve I do ev- reward myself with food. Of course you do because yes. you're a person. Yeah, I was a you. nine-year-old. I couldn't have a Capri fucking son, Miss Marta. <laughs> like, are you fucking kidding me? I had a lavender little donut for breakfast. Yes. You know why? I woke up. Because you woke up and you treated yourself. What's up, As team? you should. Yeah. What's up, team? <laughs> the, the I woke up. That's actually the best way to start. What's up, team? I had a lavender donut this morning because I woke up. Because I woke up. What's up, team? And I'm rewarding my body with movement. It yes. feels yes. good. You know what's one thing that um, a dance teacher taught me that's positive <laughs> is whenever you start. So she was she was like um, spiritual, whatever. Like she reminds me of um the Mo- Barbara Streisand and Meet the Fockers. Like, okay. very mm-hmm. like that, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. oh, you just have sex, orgasm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she was like, very cool, but not like in a weird way where she was bringing up fucking all the time. She's cool. She was wearing like turquoise and beads and crystals, mm-hmm. and I love that. But she told me once that like, sometimes we feel upset about something because people are constantly, like, there was a best friend, for example, that I had that I'm no longer friends with, and I would leave. And I'd feel like I didn't like myself and so insecure. And I was like, do I feel this way? Or did I just absorb the way that she feels about me? Like you, so you have to see yourself as like this window panel and people are constantly leaving their thumbprints all over you. Like after this conversation, I'm going to leave them like, Emily, I feel like I could like run a mountain because what a happy time. Yeah. That was such a good, I've never danced better. I've never danced better. Too bad it was contemporary. Were you like, yeah, exactly. Like Chris Brown, I Mm, you yeah. still have it. You no. still you don't. Are gone. you just saying that, or are you like? No, I really. You don't. have the, you have all the makings of a pop star. Is That's what we're what learning. I'm you can sing. Boom, boom, you can dance. Man. I can sing. I can dance. You know pop culture. Mm-hmm. I could be America's sweetheart if they let me. Do you remember Jessica Simpson's Irresistible? Cause you're irresistible up close and personal. I need a tea to, to, I can barely breathe. No. I can barely breathe. No. <laughs> yeah, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You joined it. Yeah. I can barely breathe. Yeah. Like, we got it. I don't know, but I see opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, well, that was good. That's like her. She did um, an MTV Diaries. You think you know? You have no idea. Do you remember mm-hmm. those? Barely. Barely. So MTV had MTV Diaries, and they followed around a pop star for a day, usually to premiere their um, music video. So we followed around Christina Aguilera for a day of the uh, recording of Fighter. Okay, yes. Yeah. So And then we did, like, Mandy Moore for a day. and I think Were you was... involved in this, or were you just watching it? There are many ways to be involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you're, you're saying the, the we, I was we. like, were you working no, on this No, I was project? there. I was there. Listen, TRL, you had to vote. I'm very much a part of Britney Spears. I wanted to be on TRL so badly. Mm-hmm. That I want was them the to dream. give it to me and so I can call it Teffy Real Live. And they won't give it to me. Give it to me. Give, give it, it to me. me. Give, give it to me. Give it to you. They're like, oh, and whenever you're pitching stuff, I'm sure you guys pitch stuff all the time. They're like, what's your why? Because I want to. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> so, you're, so you're walking through the revolving door oh. equinox the mm-hmm. day Robin Williams Yeah, he, And dies. so then I get the BuzzFeed alert. Yeah. Robin Williams has passed away. And I just stop moving. She's like, hello, hello. And I can feel the revolving door hitting me on my butt because she's trying to push it. And I just stop pushing. Wait, it's very sex in the city. That no, not even. <laughs> it, it was very like uh, Anchorman. I'm in a glass mm. case of my emotions. Hannah Montana, the movie. I, didn't I hate see to it. bring it up. but she, I hate to bring it up. Do you hate it to bring it up? I hate to bring it up like that. And also have just brought up High School Musical. And like my frame of reference is getting really niche because of that it. podcast. It's children. Um, <laughs> yeah. Literally. But no, she like uh, she like gets bad news as she's in a revolving door and then she like takes off the wig and the door just keeps going and she's just like slow motion about seven times through the revolving door and like a little girl sees her with the wig off and it's like the big it's like the Reveal. pinnacle of the whole movie so you, you kind of have that happen yeah. you honestly have to watch I'll watch Cabin in the Woods if you watch the Hannah Montana movie you know what I feel that's fair what got you so like pop culture obsessed loneliness 
Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's probably the case for most people. That explains, I think, probably why I'm also addicted to it. Loneliness? Are you an only child? No. Me neither. And I also, like, I had a sister who was very present, and Andrew was always by my side, but I, but it, I always longed to be lonely. You it's know, your like, main character syndrome. Yeah, it's like the Lana Del Rey. Yeah, you like, always I'm been obsessed. alone on this road. It was Tumblr for you, too. Tumblr, yeah. I was a big really. Tumblr girl. Big, 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 big. Yeah. yeah, Tumblr was the big one for me. Like me and every other 15-year-old British girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. I and think I was like, they're just like me. Are you a family of immigrants? My no. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna, like, no, I was gonna start like going my up grandma. layers. Like, well, your grandparents. My grandparents are immigrants. So you're third generation, second generation. That's second, but then like my mom's side, I'm like third or fourth. Okay. Well, for me, first gen, and I was first born. Yeah. I think my obsession with pop culture is I was thinking. I was actually thinking about this like the other day. Was my obsessed with being like, a, being a, Americanized. Yeah. Like I wanted to be American. You know what I mean? Like, um, even though Miami. When you guys, like, I'll take you to all the spots or whatever, yes. but, like, it's very Cuban. Like, it's not, it's not like going to a suburb in New Jersey. You know right. what I mean? Like, it's yeah. extremely Latin. But everybody in Latin America wants to be, in some way, Spanish. You're like, from Spain. Like, there's always that, like, root of, like, mm-hmm. wanting to look rich and white no matter what. And I feel like that obsession and, and thin. But when you're Latin, you also want to make sure that you are, like... You're not like it, you have to decide between. Do you want to be this white skinny girl or do you want to be like the Sofia Vergara? Because you can't be both. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And one is for your family, but the other is for like society. Right. So you kind of like straddle this line. You know what I mean. And I feel like pop culture for me was a way to get intel on American mm-hmm. people. You know oh, what I mean. Wow. Yeah. All of Miami, like we we all considered ourselves American, and we were all like watching the same things, but it was like we were watching people who were like not like us. Right. And it was different. You know yeah, what I mean? That must have been a very isolating experience. Mm-hmm. Or you would watch Italian people and they fight like you. You know what I mean? Right, or you yeah. watch like Greek people, like my big fat Greek wedding. Yes. You know, like it, it was also a way to feel like Connected. we're not so different right. too. You know what I mean? So yeah. Wow. wow. That was a great observation. Thanks. I have this whole thing about like food and like diet culture during the t- 2000s where it's like to not break bread with your family is like to literally cut yourself off from your culture. What you do know you mean? what I mean? Like the when you are Colombian, like my mom's Colombian, my dad's Brazilian, when you sit down, you're eating Colombian food. Mm-hmm. But because diet culture and like e- mm. EDs are so bland, you are literally cutting yourself off from your identity. Like one meal. Yeah, at a time. that makes we sense. Feel, I feel that. When I like went vegetarian and like coincided with like one of my ED flare ups, mm-hmm. like it was like probably the biggest strain in my relationship to my family because mm-hmm. I was like just not eating what they ate. Like I would like have like tofu and fucking like bland mm-hmm. vegetables and like they would eat like Sunday sauce and they'd yeah. be like we made this for and, you yes. we love Your you mom really I like, remember like my bonding mom, with Joe's yeah. mom being like she was like he doesn't even eat my meatballs anymore and it was like devastating for her for years and I was like oh that's really I'll eat your meatballs uh, hey get those don't meatballs don't worry get those meatballs let's have tea <laughs> I honestly I, I my family did not cook Mm. So it was a little easier for me because I'd be like one morning start patty, but my grandparents cooked. And when my no. grandparents cooked, I had those grandparents that were like so like in distress, eat. like sobbing, crying if I didn't eat. Yeah. So that was like the one thing that I had. Is that something for you? So you don't cook now, though? I I have no interest in it. Okay, you have no interest no in it? No interest in it. Not even like culturally, like want to like continue those traditions <laughs> and those... It, 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 you know what it is? Is that I feel, and I know this is like so weak like I am pro woman, but I feel like the only way I would learn how to cook is if I was in a relationship. Okay. To do like cutesy pootsy stuff. Mm. But I just I, I find it romantic for me to do the Uber Eats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. It's romantic for me. Like I feel like a little city girl. I'm Miss Congeniality. I'm Sandra mm-hmm. Bullock in um two weeks notice ordering the Chinese yes. food. Yes for one. Was she an inspiration to you? Sandy? Yeah. Like comedically. You kinda give. That's Egot crazy. coming soon. Yeah. Please. EGOT unless they soon. make it something else. Unless have, you the EGOT. Any, have you had any yet? <laughs> any EGOTs? Yeah. Have I won an Emmy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Listen, I'm actually like, I think that's almost a nice thing to ask. Listen, yeah. I'm. if everything goes according to witchcraft, I will be. Yeah. Are you a witch? Oh my God. I will do whatever it fucking takes. Yeah. I won't hurt like a forest animal. Right. Yeah. Anything else. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, of course. Like, I think if you're going to do this, that's what I think. There was so much of my life where I was asking people for permission to to be seen and heard and w- doing things so much that maybe I would be complimented by it or be like, oh my God, be great for this. And then as I got older, I realized 
that's not how shit works. And I'm going to have to look like Cher has this quote. If you're not willing to look stupid, you'll never be successful. Yeah. And I used to do this like live YouTube show is produced by this company. It was about pop culture and it was live every day. And I will wow. never forget and I had a whole like writing team. It was amazing. But I remember in the first few episodes being like, how many people viewed today's show? And they would be like, counting or not counting your mom? Fuck me. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. fuck. So once you get over that like idea of being seen as like a fucking lunatic, I'm like, if this is a fucking simulation, if I'm like plugged in like fucking Keanu or I'm like a little sim player, I might as fucking well. I might as fucking well. I remember when Bad Bunny was like in the back of a pickup truck with his speakers going around the Bronx. And yeah. people were being like, oh, this new guy is like promoting his album. You know what I mean? And look at him right. now. And I'm like, if that's all it takes, if it takes swallowing your pride and and I think still being excited about things, like wanting to share things, yeah. then I can do whatever the fuck I want. I don't know if that's a Tony. Oh, fuck. <laughs> bit myself. The kiss. I don't know if it's a It's a little kiss. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to wipe yeah, this one down. Sanitize. Or sell it. I could use the cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The two bucks. <laughs> the two bucks that Derek ten. the Gay in my DMs will buy. <laughs> but yeah, I think that uh, you guys are going to definitely have like a number one show. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, Obviously, same. I think that you, I thought you already had an Emmy. You want to be in the show? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay, okay. great. It's great. Perfect. If Where you, we, if you make character? me the home improvement eyes only bitch, I swear to fucking God. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to fucking God. Like when you were making fun of that guy Ariana Grande is with. Don't put that on me. When you, Don't you, put you, that you guys saw it. You were making fun of. Because I actually do think he's kind of hot. I do think he's kind of hot. And now what do you have to say about that? I think you're lying. I think I wasn't lying, but I think what's worse. <laughs> I wasn't lying, however. Like, what's worse? Ding, ding, ding. I'm gonna, no, I'm going to bring it back to mm -hmm. myself. It's worse to laugh and not disagree. I didn't stand up for him in that moment. So that's worse. Wait, hold on. You're good. You, don't, <laughs> don't move away from me. <laughs> you pull away. <laughs> I think oh. I've never, you know what we can say? We've never been on Broadway. And he yeah. has that. So he can look at me and be like, I don't care what you say about me. I'm on little fucking Broadway. Yeah, I'm in the right. new Wicked movie. You're right. yeah. And you're, you're absolutely the right. The moment that you punch down is when it's not good. Yeah. You can punch up at He did leave his wife for Ariana Grande. I think you're fine. You're actually so right. Okay. Yeah. I think, you're okay. I think you're okay. I think you're okay. Sorry. It's okay. It's actually, it's amazing how it has fallen off. <laughs> yeah. It was We're me, all, I guess. Everyone's consoling. It. Like, people have to come in. <laughs> Good children to the guidance office. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. Okay, so people really, okay. So people knew who I was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank God. People were freaking when out. When I told people that you were coming on the podcast, people were almost saying, like, Teppy is my god. That is so amazing. Yes. That what, is so sweet. Do you have any thoughts about why that is? Like, why are you, like, because people are really compelled by you and really want to hear your opinions on, like, your advice on life. I have no idea. Okay. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I have no idea. It just I just happened. feel like. Has it always been that way, like, since you were younger? Like, no, no, like, no. I was bullied merci right. mercilessly. Got like, it. terrible. But I feel like everybody is. That's when like people are like, oh, I was bullied. I'm like, we've all mm -hmm. been bullied. Yeah. I was five foot seven with a mole. In middle school, mm -hmm. there is nothing you could say to me. I think one teacher called me mole girl by accident. Oh, you know what? It's fine, Miss Mahogany. I don't even think about it. Teffy, I feel like my boyfriend is too close to his female work colleagues, and it makes me so uncomfortable. Example, he told me they call one female co-worker his girlfriend. I don't... If somebody... This is my, this is my thing. When you're in a relationship, being not... Being uncomfortable is enough of a reason. Mm -hmm. So if you're not coming from a weirdo place, like a toxic place, like if you were to say like, you cannot have friends who are girls, that's like, if somebody texted me and said, I don't want my boyfriend to have girlfriends, well, that's not about him. Right. It, you could be dating the love of your life. It wouldn't matter if, if, if other women, and that sucks because when you get cheated on, it's kind of like you have to be paranoid of your own community, right? Like when I was cheated on, um, in every single relationship I've ever been in. I remember being like, I would meet new people and I would think, oh my God, is she his type? Like it kind of fucks with you, you yeah. know what I mean? Like that's about you. But in this situation, I, wa I wanna ask him two things. Would you like it if I went to work and someone called someone, my little boyfriend, would right. you like it? Yeah. And if you do, I don't think that's the kind of relationship I wanna be in. Yeah. She obviously wants somebody to be like, this. that's inappropriate. You can have girlfriends. She's not even saying anything. I think you should tell your boyfriend that, that there's a boundary that you have and you can have little female friends and stuff like that. I think 
texting 24 seven and y- you should want a man that gets along with girls. Yeah. That's amazing. But little pet names that yeah. are intimate like that. Calling girlfriend. Because how hard did you have to work to be his girlfriend? Let's be real. Yeah. yeah. Like I love that all my exes were like, and we fell in love so seamlessly. I was mission impossible in that bitch. Are you mm-hmm. fucking crazy? I had a folder for memes for you, little memories. I was like right. remembering everything you liked. I would mm-hmm. like put my hair in a little fucking bow. You right, know what yeah. I mean? Like you to throw that term out there, an exclusive, intimate relationship, is not fucking cool. No. And I would tell him, this is making me uncomfortable. That's good enough of a reason for you to fight back and tell me to let it go when you can ask anybody. I would say this, too. Go up to any woman on the street. Tell, me, tell them your story right now. Go up to yeah, any woman yeah. on the street. If you went up to another woman on the street and said, she won't let me have female friends, the girl would be like, oh, you're crazy. He's calling his work wife his little girlfriend. That's what they call her. Mm -hmm. They would say, bitch, you're crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it's a slippery slope. It's a slippery fucking slope. Trust. And once you you break that, my mom used to tell me, what you guys have right now is really precious. And you don't realize how precious or the work it takes to, like, get back to that place until you've lost it. Mm. So I would tell him, if you'd like to fuck around, you will find out, and I don't think you'd like it. Mm. Wow. So Cheat like, back, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's actually Talk about yeah. being compelled. I'm yeah, like, Holy I'm like, oh, there's shit. the answer that we just yeah. <laughs> How can I put myself out there if I've done bad in the past? Like murder? I don't know really like, what they what, mean by that. I've done oh, like I've been i how can it's I put context. myself out there if I've done bad in the past? How can I put myself out there if I've done bad in the past? This is like an SAT question. question. <laughs> like, like, okay. I've done bad in the on. past, so how do I put myself out there? Does she mean like cheating? Like if she cheated on somebody? Or does she mean like I've been bad at putting myself out there? Or like... Mm. I guess I'll answer for both. Yeah. For one, you already did it. Yeah. You already did it. Right. And how many people do you know? Think about everybody you've ever known that's cheated on somebody. They fu- Or like even... Cele- we can even make a celebrity. You think Brad Pitt doesn't get dates? Right. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, everybody, everybody's fucked up. It's like I had the same question similarly. Like, um, uh, I got a DUI and I feel so bad. It already happened. You mm-hmm. did it. It's yeah. over. You learned yeah. from it. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's not, that's something that you're going to carry for the rest of your life if you choose to. And I feel like, I think that we're kind of lucky because we aged out of this a little bit more. But I feel like the new, like, Gen Z and, like, teenagers, like, what like they're carrying their crimes with them like yeah. everything is like it's a forever feeling and it's instead n- of being like it actually is not that deep no uh, the scoreboard I call it the scoreboard but mm. the things that you are proud of are just as important as the things you are ashamed of so like mm. yes you cheated but you're a great grandkid you're a great daughter mm. you're a good friend you mm. show up to work you do you do your like you know what I mean yeah you fucked up it's like if somebody were to tell me like oh I cheated in the past would I not date them of course I would. Right. Of course I would because I'm human and I'm not perfect either. You know, like I don't think I've like cheated, cheated, cheated on somebody. But I've definitely been like, if you ask my sister, was I the perfect big sister? No. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did she work out of my juicy couture tank talks? There's two sides. Oh, oh she wow. fixed her motorcycle once in my juicy couture bejeweled tank top. She's a butch lesbian, so she's like. Sorry, she's kind of swaying in that. No, but there's. Oh, she was killing it. I was like fixing her <laughs> motorcycle her that. Fucking short hair, her pixie cut fucking bitch. No, but I, I, or if you've done bad at putting yourself out there, my answer to most things is what's the alternative? Right. That you don't mm-hmm. and then what happens? Yeah. If you want to if you want to get out there and you want to meet people, you're going to have to fucking do it. You think I want to be out there looking at people and talking looking at people? <laughs> you think I want to be <laughs> you're looking at people? We're like we're like I'm I'm not someone too that like I go out to meet people. I'm going out with my friends to have like, a, a, yeah, a good time yeah. to dance or whatever. Like mm-hmm. I'm not really thinking about that. But of course, I want to meet somebody like special one day right. or whatever. Everyone's talking about like how monogamy sucks. I think monogamy is so rock and roll. Mm. It's now it's the it's all to be monogamous. It's so it's like lesser. It's like yeah. oh you're, you're you're puny mind. Yeah. I was like well I could easily love somebody for like thirty years if they let me. <laughs> they just gave me the opportunity. Yeah. All you have to do is be nice to me and only fuck me. That's yeah. it. That's yes. all I ask. Yeah. Be nice, nice to me. Minimum. Like please. And like yeah. maybe you'll cook a meal for them if they were. 
You'll oh my learn God. to cook for them. I have so many cookbooks. Oh. I have so many cookbooks. I am... Are you buying them or are they like PR? Like <laughs> no, how... I'm buying them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they look so good up. in the kitchen. Got it. They do. Got it. They do. But that's what I'm saying. Like when it comes to like putting yourself out there, no risks, no re- reward. If rejection is getting in the way, it does. It's like rejection is so. We get rejected from things all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. If you really have, I think people that want to be put out there the most are people who have so much love to give. Go do it. Yeah. I call it the cannonball theory, where I always pretend like I'm going to jump into like one, two, three, go, and I just fucking do it. Where I'm like, can I have your number? Like I just like do it. You Good know what for I mean? You. Do they say yes? Sometimes. Right. Sometimes. And what's the worst that happens when they say no? Yeah. Rejection. Yeah. You you live. So you but you gotta on. release their fear of rejection. I have a huge fear of rejection. Yeah, but that also comes from self worth or whatever. Mm. And I think for me, it's like I immediately feel like this l- little girl, like yeah. mm-hmm. that really wants people to like her. Yeah. That's why we're entertainers. You know what yeah. I mean? Like everything we do, it's I I can't believe I have so many issues with self worth, and I chose this career. Yeah, it's yeah, sickening. It's really, it's sickening. really, it's damaging. Like, <laughs> it's just continue. It's, it's like when you're used <laughs> to feeling that way, you're like seeking out ways to keep feeling that way, and this is the best way to feel that way. The I, best way to continue the kink of being ashamed and feeling yeah. like you're not good enough. No, dating. I have made an audition. Yeah, yeah. my life, my career is an audition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. my TikToks are auditions. Yeah. My everything, everything, everything yes. is like, and I just, I want to be able to find common ground with self esteem. Or like uh, somewhere in the middle, balanced self-esteem and being grounded. I don't want to be arrogant, but I do want to look at a job and be like, they need me. Or they'd be stupid not to want to work with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Um, congratulations to the person. I think envy envy and jealousy are different things, right? Envy is with one person. Jealousy is a three-person thing. When you're jealous of someone because of a, something else. Oh. that You know what I mean? But envy is like one and one. Brene Brown taught me that. Right. She didn't tell me. I listened to her yeah, um, yeah, yeah. book. But I think envy and uh, rejection and people pleasing syndrome is like really what's holding people back from being their true selves. So like, what if we just did the things that we wanted to do in a way that would make little me proud all the time? And right. I think that would be great. But also listening to my inner child, like she's also a fucking kid. You know what I mean? Yes. Like when she's yeah. like, you should eat cereal for breakfast. I'm like, well, you're a child. Yeah. So. Right. Sometimes right. you have to be the parent mm-hmm. to that child. Exactly. Yeah. So Are you not you... eating cereal for breakfast? I did yesterday. Yeah, I mean, like, That's I have good. cereal. All... I'm, like, I'm yes. averaging, like, You're three You're listening to the day. ballet teacher also now is what's happening. She's, <laughs> she's yeah. there, too. Yeah, so, so putting yourself out there, it's like, make little you excited about being an adult, you know? Just yeah. Do yeah. It. yeah. That's a beautiful, beautiful message. Stop. I feel like we should land on that. Yeah. We landed the plane. Stop it, don't. What's up, team? <laughs> um, thank you so much thank for coming you. in. Thank you for imparting this wisdom. Oh, my like, God. Thank this you for what so you're doing fun. on the daily outside yeah. of this. You what know? would you call that? What you're doing on the daily? <laughs> I think Inspiring. sharing yourself with the world, which I'm is teffing. a vulnerable and hard thing to do. Mm-hmm. And you guys are the same. Yeah, you're thank doing you. it to a much larger level, <laughs> yeah. I'd say. <laughs> I'd say so. Yeah. Um, that's the goal so. the goal is to do the same people so. are very excited that I was on this podcast very very excited I'm sure there were people <laughs> <laughs> your mom yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. DMing yeah. Yeah. no I'm super happy about this yes yeah thank you clap. I mean when Debbie tells you to clap you I must clap in with applaud fear in my heart Tell everyone where they can find you, what you're up to in your dreams I always say that but um, hello Teffy on all platforms Beautiful. Except for that girl that took it on OnlyFans. I was just checking if they had it. I wasn't going to do right. it. And but somebody did take it. Do they you. look like you? No. Okay. At least there's no that, would be that, that would be so weird. We go to the courts. <laughs> Aww. Aww. It's over. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, I lived. I learned. I, I laughed. listened. I laughed. I loved. We'll see you next week for a brand new episode. But until then, don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate. Write a nice little review. Give us five a five star stars. rating, please. My heart and your heart needs it. Yeah. But you know where to find us at all, across all social media platforms at Good Children Pod. I am on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella and on TikTok at Andrew underscore Musky. And I am on Instagram at Joe Hedges and on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. I feel like I've taken a hiatus from posting because my TikToks are flopping, but um, I think this week 
I've been like back in a big way. Big, big, big. And I'm manifesting that because this is coming. <laughs> this is coming out in like a week and a half. So which means ne- this upcoming week that's actually happening, I'm gonna be back in a but big way. But you know way. what, Joe? It's okay because sometimes we need breaks. You need a break. People need breaks. And I don't it's okay need a to break. It's not like I'm fucking Kim Kardashian. <laughs> like it's like it really. I don't need the break. Social My media. Whole life is a taking break. a break from social media is always okay. Don't forget that. I'm kind of sad it's over. With nothing but a t-shirt on. I never never felt so beautiful. Baby, as I do now. Now that I'm with you. With you. With you. With you. you. Uh, Now that I'm I'm with with you. you.